All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Tuesday, March 15th. Beware the Ides of March 2022. And I say beware the Ides because we have OPEX this week. We have got the Fed tomorrow. We've got lots of game playing. We've got uh, markets moving 2% in a few hours, let alone a whole day. And we're getting a light volume bid here today. But, you know, talk about some, some Ides, if you will. VXX. So we talked about this yesterday <laughs> and um, you, you can kind of disregard some of what I said at this point um, because now some things have come to light here. Um, a few stories have broken and uh, I'll actually just flip it over here. And you can see. There we go. So Barclays uh, suspending further sales and issuances of VXX and uh OIL, so an oil ETF, uh, ETN actually. Um, this has a real 2018 feel to it, uh, where we had that vol mageddon and you know the hedge funds and all the banks complained that the vol products were messing everything up and causing margin calls and stuff like that. Uh, take a look at the I borrow here. Just a thousand shares of VXX available today, and only two hundred thousand yesterday. Um, so lots of a lot of games going on. I say the Ides of March. I'm not kidding. Uh, let's look at the VXX today. So you might have noticed on my usual screen, I have UVXY here. Uh, I usually have VXX, um, but this is VXX today. So it, it can't even decide whether it wants to make higher lows with the market or if it wants to uh, go lower you know, against the market like it's supposed to, but this is skewed until further notice. So disregard the VXX. I'm just using UVXY right now. And I do my work on the actual VIX, but I like to have the uh, ETN so that I can see the volume. Um, that's just my personal preference, but um, just total, total mess going on. And I, I was talking to some, uh, some of my contacts this morning and I said, you know, guys, something's wrong here. I'm looking at VXX. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, they're pumping it up to get retail. And I said, no, 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 there's something, there's something really wrong. The VXX is up in 15% in the first 15 minutes of trading today with a green S&P and a red VIX. Look at this. So we got all the way up almost to 42 here. I mean, this is insane. The first hour, you know, this went from 29 gap up to 42 here. Um, so lots of, lots of, uh, I don't even know what you call it. Uh, lots of word that starts with an F and ends, rhymes with tomfoolery uh, going on. But anyways, uh, crazy, crazy moves here. And the market really just kind of shrugged it off here. So, um, you know, the market was, the VIX, VXX kind of decoupled from itself, essentially. So it didn't seem to affect the market too much. But, um, you know, you, you can't, uh, you got to look at this and, and, you, and not think that there's something afoot here. But anyways... Uh, big move here on the VIX, or, or VXY rather. Um, I wouldn't make too much out of today uh, as far as the move up. Nice move here, a little ABC pattern for the market. Um, there's very light volume here though. So take a look here at the spiders. It's 3.38 p.m., so about 20 minutes left to go. And we only have 77 million shares traded. So um, if the bears wanted to come in, you know, I, I get the sense that right now the bears... They're not wasting their firepower for a meaningless Tuesday. They want to save their firepower for the FOMC tomorrow. Um, the one thing I will say is we are starting to creep up on this trend line you can see right there. Um, and this does look a little potentially, given the light volume and the kind of uncontested rally, this does look like, you know, if we gap up tomorrow, I could definitely see a bull trap being in the cards. Um, you know, getting about, I mean, they did it this time. They did it this time as well. Um, and usually things come in threes. So usually you want to look for those three pivot lows. And I think that, again, I said this yesterday, that 400 level is kind of like a magnet. We're so close to it, but you know, there is a chance that, you know, maybe we start to sell off and it becomes a bear trap and we make a higher low and, you know, they, they get squeezed, but I would be very careful of a, of a gap up tomorrow, especially if there's light volume. I mean, there should be light volume before the FOMC. There usually is, but um, if this market just starts rallying for no reason, that might be, you know, your antenna should go up a little bit. All right. Let's look at a few sectors and stocks. So uh, IWM here up 1.4%, still inside of yesterday's candle. So lagging a little bit here. 
Um, not a huge move, kind of a quiet day for the Russell Dow into that 20 day moving average. So interesting to see if they can close it above that. This is a minor moving average at this point, you're parallel to it. So it's not really a, a huge deal, but it could be a psychological level if they close it above there uh, in the near term. Um, big star of the day, triple Q's up 3% here. So a nice move in the triple Q's and that was really first evident in the morning. Semi's getting a nice push right in the first half hour. Uh, outperforming really the rest of the market. And, you know, when you see the semiconductors do well, usually that bodes well for the market and for tech. You can see NVIDIA in the corner of my screen. NVIDIA there up seven, over 7%. 7 AMD, uh, nice move today, up under 7%. Take a look at Micron. This might actually have bottomed here. I have this level on here from quite a while ago. 100 week moving average. Yeah, this could be a little bottom on, on, on Micron if we can get follow through tomorrow. Uh, but I, I like that reversal candle. Totally reversed yesterday's high, tested the lows too. So that might be a little bottom there on Micron. But Semi's getting a nice move today overall. Take a look at Apple as well. So, and I forgot to mention this yesterday. I'm kind of upset. I, I wanted to, but they gapped it below the 200 day moving average and then just flushed it down. They just puked it lower, right? And you know what happened probably into the close and maybe this morning as every amateur said, oh, it closed below the 200 day moving average. So we got to go short and then they just rip it higher. You got to wait for confirmation, guys. You can't just let you can't let them fake you out like that. You got to wait for, you know, weekly confirmation or a secondary close or, you know, a rejection of a back test, something, you know, a bear flag. But, you know, Piker is probably jumping in short and that gave fuel for a squeeze, but made me chuckle to see Apple ripping higher today here. Anyways, that, uh inside of tech as well. IGV up 2.41% right now. A um, little bit of a muted bounce here. We'll see if it gets follow through tomorrow, but that's kind of a weak bounce there. Can't even get above yesterday's high, but it is trading higher uh, just like everything else right now. Uh, all right, Dell Transports. So it's hammering on this trend line. So I, I mentioned this a few days ago. You could have, you know, you can make a case that's an inverse head and shoulders. So you have to close above this neckline to trigger it, um, but we'll see what we get out here. So it's right on that trend line right now. I don't know what's going to do into the close. Volume's a little bit better on the transports. And again, we've been talking about the jets a lot recently. This should be pun intended or maybe not. I don't know. Cleared for takeoff, I guess. Um, so I talked about this red bar high here, 1895. We're going to close above that today. So that should take you right up to that uh, $20 area. Doesn't mean it goes there in a straight line. Might have to, you know, chop for a little bit. But got above that breakdown bar. So that is a good positive there for the jets. Uh, let's see. All right. Home builders. We haven't, uh, I think I skipped over the home builders the last couple of days. Be watching this for pattern though. Nice move. 3.3%. I'm watching this for pattern on the weekly and I want to see how yields affect this and the VNQ. Um, but VNQ holding up reasonably well for right now. Um, yields again, uh, surging higher up 1% here on the 10 year. I have to think that, and we've got a 30 year here as well. 2 2.505. Jeez. So I have to think that tomorrow we'll probably get a sell the news and yields, or rather just the bonds will get bid. Um, we're just up too much in too short of a period of time. I mean, you have to think that some of the rate hikes have got to be priced in right now, right? Um, and it doesn't mean yields won't go higher. I still think yields have, um, you know, I've got higher price targets for yields for the 10 year and the 30 year, but um, short term, this does look a little overdone right here. Like it's a little piled in. So just some thoughts going into tomorrow, a uh, high yield, also got a little bit of a bid, but still inside of yesterday's candle. So um, again, not the greatest look, uh, <laughs> at least not right now, but it is holding that 80 handle for now. So I guess it's safe for the time being. All right, XLF, kind of a non-event up 1.4, 1.5%. I'm just kind of hanging in there, not in the strongest technical position. Broker dealers green as well. You do have a, I mentioned this the other day, you have a potential little inside bar here. So maybe this does get a bid up. Um, so there's that power bar, little pullback. We'll see if it gets a pop, but again, it's all going to depend on the Fed, uh, of course. Um, as far as individual fin names, I do not like some of these. So JPM really has got to get back above 135. If it keeps chopping, this is putting in a bare base. So this has got to really uh, get off the canvas right now. Bank of America, I'm not a fan of either. You got a lot of resistance up here. Gap fill, 220 crossing over there. So not, not a good look here at Wells Fargo. There's resistance up here at this necktie, but more importantly, you lost that green bar low on a weekly closing basis here on Wells Fargo. I don't, I, I have to think Wells Fargo is going to go a lot lower. Um, 
if I had to make a guess here. But um, not a great look here in financials, but yeah, they're holding up for now. Um, energy pulling back a little bit, hitting that 20 moving average on the XLE. You also have this uh, consolidation area, so that's going to be support. It might get a bounce here. It probably does, actually. Same thing on the XOP. You know, these things are pulling back a little bit, but none of them have broken trend. OIH, good good level there on OIH. Gap fill, 20 moving average extended. Not a bad spot there for a bounce. Um, crude, same kind of deal. So into this trend line here, into this uh, previous consolidation, basically kissed the 50 moving average. You got a little gap there. So maybe it gets a little bit lower, but this should get a bounce here. Now what you want to look for is does it make a lower high? And if it does that, then it can, you know, go back lower and push through 95. And your next stop would be around 85, maybe 84. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens when we get there. It has to make that lower high first. But I do think this is a very good bounce area for crude. Nat gas, a nothing burger pretty much. Um, just a little hammer candle inside of yesterday. Same thing on the dollar index, hammer candle inside of yesterday. So we'll have to see for, we'll have to see, um, if this gives us some type of a pattern, uh, you know, if it consolidates or pulls back or whatever, but nothing really going on in the dollar right now. Gold uh, sharply pulling back here. Thought this would have bounced a little bit more off of the 20 moving average. Um, by the way, I do have a video. Um, I'm going to put the link in the description from a video I did a year ago. I was revisiting that last night. And I talked about it over the weekend, but I'm going to do, uh, and I might even finish it up tonight, but I'm going to do a new video kind of updating long-term uh price targets and kind of just cyclical forecasts for gold um, based on some of the stuff I've seen this year. And um, but yeah, I'll put that, you got to watch the uh, the first video first. Um, but yeah, I'll put that in the, in the description there. But anyways, gold pulling back here, it's trying to hold the 20 moving average, it's not doing a very good job. GDX is doing a much better job though. Gapped right down into that 20 moving average. I tried getting filled on some call options here. The spreads were just too wide. And uh, you know, look, it just kind of ran away from me, but that would have been a really massive gain which is going to probably bug me for a week or two. But nice pop there on GDX off the 20 moving average. Again, it's kind of looking like oil, right? So oil, XLE, they're both fear trades. They're both geopolitical trades, gold, all just kind of pulling back after going parabolic. Typically, you get a bounce off of the first, uh, first retrace to uh, support. You also have this area here on gold. So that's, you know, probably going to hold up, at least in the near term. You probably get a bounce there again. Then you want to look for potentially a lower high. Silver um, coming back in as well, but getting a bit off that 20 moving average again. Same kind of look here on the chart. It's holding that 20 MA for now. Nothing terrible there. Um, SIL gapping down and then finishing green, kind of like GDX. But this is in a much weaker technical position than GDX. And the SILJ, go figure, is in a better technical position than SIL. Anyways, platinum. Selling off very sharply here. Palladium sold off very sharply yesterday, getting a bit of a kind of dead cap bounce today. Um, so yesterday I talked about, you know, the potential of, hey, maybe somebody knows something uh, about a peace deal, because that would not surprise me at all. But I also neglected to talk about the China lockdown. So there's that as well. So apologies there to not uh, remember to include that full story there. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody does know something about a peace deal. That is the type of shady stuff that goes on, and especially during, you know, an OPEX week. And we see these types, this type of volatility. Look at the metals here. Look at platinum. I mean, that's got to be a 50% retrace. I'm just going to do this real quick. Yeah, that's a, well, that's a 618 already in basically five trading days. So you were on the verge of breakout and you re retraced 61% of that move. Crazy move there on uh, platinum there. Anyways, copper, a uh, bit of a nothing burger. This probably gets a bounce here, though. I see a lot of support in this area, but nothing really uh, too noteworthy going on. Anyways, let's flip over to the coins. Then we'll wrap up. So what did we talk about yesterday? Uh, Bitcoin and Ether were, and all cryptos yesterday were green in a market that got bludgeoned to death. Um, so again, that was showing some strength. Again, Bitcoin, nice little hammer candle inside of yesterday's green candle. That's not bearish. That's a good look there. Ether up 2%. So the coins are holding up. And man, I got to tell you, these coins have been good leading indicators for the strength of the market really for quite some time now. Um, and they kind of go through periods where they are and then they aren't. But recently, they have been really good leading indicators and I continue to use them. Um, so Again, maybe Bitcoin's telling us that we're going to, you know, if we can get a bid, maybe it's telling us that we have some short-term uh, upside in the market. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what the bureaucrats at the, at the Fed are going to say. Um, I think a lot of 
a lot of everything is priced in right now uh, overall. Yields, uh, rate hikes, I mean, inflation, you got to figure a lot of it's priced in. And again, you know, I say this don't blue in the face, but there's tons of puts in the system and nobody's hedging with calls. So it's like, yeah, I understand wanting to hedge with puts, but what if the opposite happens and you're not hedged for that? So I don't know. I guess that's just the way I look at it. Um, you try to look at things from a logical perspective on both sides there. Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe all the put buyers win and we get a move down to 400. It's totally possible. Again, like I said yesterday, this gap is like a magnet the closer you get to it. So it's totally not impossible. But, you know, there's just also the chance we could get the rug pulled. Uh, but anyways, we'll see what we get out here tomorrow. Again, first half of the day will probably be very quiet. And then we'll get into the afternoon and uh, things should pick up. It'll be interesting to see what the VXX does, what the algos do to it off of the FOMC statement. Uh, so we'll be watching that. Uh, for some humor. Let's see if we get above this trend line before we wrap up here. So we, we're we we're hammering on this trend line right now. Um, and, and this might not be the most accurate drawing. You know, I could probably draw it better, but we're right underneath that. So we'll be watching that tomorrow. If we gap up on no volume and the market rallies, I would be very suspect uh, of this market. So just kind of want to throw that out there. Anyways, guys, wrap it up here. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com. Come take the course. Education is amazing. The course is awesome. Uh, I highly encourage you to take it. Anyways, guys, take care. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.